Hello, my name is Sean Atkins with the Office of Graduate Admission here at Mount St. Joseph University. I want to be speaking to you today about the prerequisite courses and the admission requirements that we receive uh, questions on for the Magellan program. The Magellan program is the master's graduate entry level into nursing program and it's designed for students who already have a bachelor's degree in any field other than nursing who wish to obtain the knowledge to sit for the NCLEX RN licensure examination and want an accelerated full-time path to becoming a registered nurse at the master's degree level. Our program is 15 to 16 months in length, depending on which program start date you choose, which we have start dates every January, May, and August, but in the end it ends up being 15 to 16 months in length. Our program is designed for students looking for personalized attention in small class sizes, as well as a desire to learn in a safe, friendly community. Now some facts about Mount St. Joseph University. We were originally known as the College of Mount St. Joseph and were established in 1920 by the Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati. We are regionally accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. We're also accredited by the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education. The Mount enrolls about 1,800 undergraduate students and 550 graduate students. And we offer a number of graduate programs, including physical therapy, business, nursing, religion, education, and we are hoping soon to develop a physician assistant program. We're in the process of doing that now. We strive to educate students through interdisciplinary liberal arts and professional, professional curricula, emphasizing values, integrity, and social responsibility. U.S. News and World Report consistently ranks the Mount among the top colleges and universities in the Midwest. The Nursing Schools Almanac ranks us in the top 7% of all nursing schools in the Great Lakes region. The first um, portion of the frequently asked questions really involves the prerequisites. And I first want to go over with you which courses are necessary for the prerequisites. Now these courses, all 10 of them, would need to be completed before you can actually en enroll in the Magellan program. Now you can, of course, apply uh, during the time you're taking these and have a spot saved for you for when you're ready to start. But these are the 10 prerequisite courses you would need in order to be enrolled in the Magellan program. So first, I want to go, I want to go through them one by one. Uh, first, I want to start with the Introduction to Psychology course. This would need to be an introductory course. It cannot be an upper level uh, course that covers just one area of psychology. For example, uh, just, just an abnormal psychology course would not meet the requirement. It would need to be an introductory course because those typically cover a broader span of the discipline. So we would need that type of course as well as for the sociology requirement. We would not be able to accept a sociology course just uh, specifically on gender or race. It needs to be an introductory course that covers all the areas of, of the discipline. For lifespan development, we're looking for courses or a course that would cover all three areas of the lifespan. That would be child development, adolescent development, and adult development. We would ask that um, if you have just child development that you go ahead and either take a lifespan course that covers all three areas including the child development um, or you would go ahead and take an adolescent and adult development course as well to make up for the areas you you know you do not have at this point. So a lifespan course is best or human development that covers all areas. The statistics course, we are okay if it's not an introductory course as long as it does cover the, the main principles of statistics, meaning that for some psychology majors, for example, um, they have a research methods course as an upper level course in their major that covers statistics, and that's okay. You can submit a course like that, or if you took business for statistics, if you were a, a a business major. So we do accept those kinds of courses. For nutrition, we do need a specific nutrition course. It cannot be a lifetime wellness or health course. It does need to be a nutrition specific course. For chemistry, we're okay with organic chemistry, biochemistry, uh, but it does need to be an introductory chemistry course with a lab. We are unable to take a course that um, covers everyday living in chemistry where you don't really go into in too depth with what the principles of chemistry are. Um, a chemistry for everyday society or something along those lines would not work, but um, the other courses I mentioned would be just fine. Microbiology with lab, that's pretty self-explanatory. It does need to be with a lab. For anatomy and physiology, we need two semesters of that. It can be broken up. It can be one semester of anatomy and one semester of physiology as long as both have a lab and both total two semesters. Um, or you would do anatomy and physiology one with a lab followed by anatomy with physiology two 
with a lab. And then finally, the last prerequisite course is pathophysiology, which is another self-explanatory course. As for some courses that do expire after a certain amount of time, there are three. So after five years, the if you took anatomy and physiology after, more than five years ago, that course would be expired if you're applying to the program now. So if you took pathophysiology as well as a and and uh, A&P with Lab 2 more than five years ago, those would also be expired. So keep that in mind. There is no limitation or expiration on all the other prerequisite courses. You could take, you could have taken Introduction to Psychology, for example, 30 years ago or 40 years ago, and that's totally fine. As for some ways that you can get around actually having to sit for a class if you do not have uh, all the prerequisite courses, for the Psychology, Sociology, and Lifespan Development course, you can take a CLEP test which is a multiple choice waiver test. All you have to do is score 50% and you would then waive out of those courses. Uh, for nutrition, you could take an NLN examination, but only at the point that you have been uh, admitted uh, with conditional admission and had your interview for the program is, is the only time you can take that test. So you have to wait until you're um, interviewed and, and in the program before you can take the NLN examination. If you'd like more information on those two tests, the CLEP and the NLN, contact the numbers here on your screen. And now I also want to just mention a few more things that come up a lot with the prereqs. <clears throat> One is that students want to know if they can take the courses here at the Mount. Well, of course you can. That's completely fine. But if you're wanting to get into the program a much quicker pace, you might find it best to take the courses elsewhere at a community college because we only offer some of these courses once every year whereas community colleges and some area uh, other institutions may offer them more often perhaps maybe even every semester a lot of the community colleges especially offer the courses every semester um, students also find taking the courses at a community college to be a little more cost effective at times too so that's another consideration um, please note that if you do take prerequisite courses at the mount or anywhere else that they are considered undergraduate level courses. They're not considered graduate level courses. Um, those do not kick in until you are actually sitting in the Magellan uh, program and taking those courses. So if you're looking for financial aid, you would need to apply for financial aid as an undergraduate level uh, student for the prereqs. And then once you're in the Magellan program itself, you would then be able to take use and, and take advantage of the uh, graduate level federal loans. So you want to contact our financial aid office at 513-244-4418 if you have questions about financial aid. But that's just to kind of give you a little idea about how that would work for the prereqs. Uh, also, you must earn a grade of C or above in all the prereq courses. We do not accept C minus or below, and you're only allowed to take one course over again. So if you failed it one time and want to retake it, that's fine, but we can only accept one retake. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is a uh, a screenshot of the prerequisite course equivalency chart. You can use this uh, to find out what courses at Mount St. Joseph University, for example, meet the prerequisite courses, or if you're taking them at Cincinnati State or another area school here in the Cincinnati region, um, these are the course equivalencies. Now, we do have uh, prospective students from California, Maryland, all over the country, but this chart just gives you local Cincinnati area schools that you can consider taking the prereqs at. If you have questions about any other institution not listed on this sheet, which you can find at msj.edu backslash Magellan. If you have any questions about other uh, courses at other locations, other institutions, then definitely give us a call and we'll be able to look that up and, and check to see if it's the appropriate course that you're uh, going to need for the prereq. Uh, next, uh, people ask a lot, when should I apply to the Magellan program? This is when you have earned your bachelor's degree or you're in, the, you're in your last semester of your bachelor's degree. We have students of all ages in this program from pretty much age 21, 22, just those getting out of college all the way up to in their 60s that want to go into nurse, nursing now as a career change. So um, we do require the bachelor's degree or that you're in your last semester. And we also require that you've completed at least a majority of the 10 prerequisite courses that I just listed a moment ago. Keep in mind you must maintain a GPA of 3.0 in all undergraduate courses or a 3.0 average in the prereqs completed to that point to qualify for conditional admission to the program. To be considered for admission to the program at all, you must have that 3.0 mark in one of those two areas. Um, so what is conditional admission? Uh, we get asked that a lot too. 
because folks are applying when they have about half or so of the courses done and they get conditional admitted, conditionally admitted and then they want to know what that means exactly. Well, what it means is kind of a, a status that you're in until you've completed all the remaining admission requirements and all the additional prerequisite courses if you still have some to take. Uh, once you're at that majority of the of the 10 courses. So this slide is very important. Um, you will want to uh, make sure that you have completed the majority of the courses, submit all pre-interview admission requirements, and successfully complete the interview, and then you are considered for conditional admission. Um, and again, the GPA requirements mentioned here at the bottom, again, just to keep that in mind, while you're, if you're conditionally admitted you mu and, and you're still continuing those prereqs, you must keep that or maintain that 3.0 GPA in either your, all of your undergraduate coursework or in the average of the prereqs that you're taking and, and have taken. And at the end, it still must come out to a 3.0 in one of those two areas. Um, to receive an interview for admission, you would need to, uh, again, have a majority of the prereqs as well as the completed app. Uh, and the $50 application fee, we need all transcripts from all institutions attended, and that includes even if you took one course 20 years ago at one college, we still have to have that transcript, as well as a one-page essay, a completed prerequisite course form, which is what this slide will show. This is what the form looks like. It needs to show the courses you've taken, where you took them, when you took them, and when you plan to take them if you haven't taken them. So this form can be found here at msj.edu backslash Magellan. Um, the GRE is not required, and international students, uh, we ask that you visit this website here for some additional admission requirements for the pre-interview or for the interview phase of the, of the um, admission process. Once you have all these items completed um, and, again, have the majority of the prereqs, you are then eligible to sit for a, an interview, uh, and then after that you can be accepted for conditional admission while you're taking the rest of your prereqs. The um, post-interview admission requirements after you've been conditionally admitted, you still need to, a few more things to make you um, fully admitted to the program, and that includes completing the um, immunizations, vaccinations you see here on the screen. Keep in mind that the hepatitis B series takes up to six months to complete unless you have special um, permission from a doctor to speed that up, but typically it takes up to six months. So if you're really wanting to start in January of the next year and you have all your prereqs almost completed, make sure you have these immunizations started so that you can get those all completed in time. Uh, we cannot let you start until you have them all finished. We also ask that you have an acceptable criminal background check um, that's completed at that time. And um, again, any of these items not met can revoke your admission to the program. The um, other way to get information on our program is to come into the campus for one of our information sessions. We have these throughout the year, usually March, July, and October. Uh, you can go on to this website here, the admission.msj.edu backslash portal backslash grad info and sign up for a um, interview session, I'm sorry, information session rather, information session on the program to find out more about it, get a tour of the facilities. We also allow folks to come in and meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to come in and meet with me, for example, or one of our graduate admission counselors, we're happy to do that. We're happy to review your transcripts um, with you uh, to let you know what courses you have completed and which ones you would still need in order to qualify for admission to the program. Our number is uh, listed here and our fax number as well as the, our email address where you can send materials for example the prerequisite course form and the essay you can all you can forward all those to this email address here or fax them um, keep in mind too for transcripts that you can mail them or have them emailed to us this is our mailing address if you have them snail mailed if you have them emailed this is the email address to use again they must be official transcripts and keep in mind that if you went to one school, transfer credits into another school, that we have to have both transcripts. I know that the second one might show those courses from the first school you went to, but we still need both transcripts. We have to have all transcripts from all colleges and universities attended. So that's hopefully going to help you answer some of the questions you've had regarding the prereqs and the admission requirements. If not, please feel free to give us a call or again come in for an information session or make an appointment with one of us today. Thank you and, and best of luck to you as you complete the requirements to enter the Magellan program. Thanks and have a great day.